Have you ever heard of materials that can remember their original shape? They are known as shape memory alloys or SMAs. In this trial video, we will explore the amazing world of SMAs and discuss their applications in different fields from engineering to medicine. Additionally, we will guide you on using Abaca CIE along with the UMAT subroutine to analyze the behavior of shape memory alloys. Let's explore what you will learn in this trial video. Please note that we have focused on the key points for each section in this learning video. For a more in-depth understanding, you can check out the learning package on the CAE Assistant website. It includes 80 minutes of learning video together with all the modeling files. Let's start. Shape memory alloys are a novel generation of materials composed of specific alloys that have the ability to remember their original shape and return to it. Such a behavior can be divided into two special abilities, super elasticity and shape memory. As you can see, super elasticity refers to the ability to return to the original shape after experiencing significant nonlinear deformations caused by mechanical loads. People often refer to this as spring back. As mentioned, the shape memory effect is another interesting feature of SMAs. In this figure, we will explore this concept. Imagine a specimen at the microscopic scale in its initial condition as depleted on the left side. Now let us cool it. It takes on a deformed shape shown in the middle figure. When you heat it again, the material returns to its original shape without residual deformations. But wait! That is not all. Suppose you apply a mechanical force on the same specimen and deform it as shown in the figure on the right. You can simply heat it and it will return to its original shape. Isn't that amazing? These remarkable abilities give SMAs many advantages compared to other materials. Moreover, based on the alloys used in the production of SMAs, they can be divided into different types each with specific features for various applications. If you want more details on the advantages of SMAs and their different types, you can access the package on the CAE Assistant website as we have not covered them in this video. Okay, let's review some interesting applications of shape memory alloys in various fields. We can measure the displacement of the SMA's wire by monitoring its electrical resistance. Such a feature eliminates the necessity for additional sensors in a wide range of applications. This is what we call the self-sensing capability of the SMA actuators. Thanks to this uh, capability, SMAs can be applied in, the, in health monitoring systems, enhancing robots, constructing uh, uh, machines, and building more reliable structures. Moreover, you may be surprised to learn that shape memory alloys play a significant role in, a, in the field of medicine and biomedicine. As shown, they have interesting applications in producing human implants, cardiovascular stents, and eyeglass frames. These were just a few examples of the numerous applications of SMAs. You can find more details about their applications in different fields in the provided package on our website. Now you are familiar with the characteristics of shape memory alloys and their applications. So let us explore how these materials exhibit these unique properties. SMAs can exist in two phases with three crystal structures, twinned uh, martensites, detwinned martensites and austenite. Martensite is a phase that forms at lower temperature while austenite occurs at high temperatures. The shape memory effect in SMAs is controlled by a phase change between the austenite and martensite phases. Now see the figure. When the material is in the austenite phase and cools down, it goes through a change to the twinned martensite phase. It is interesting that this transformation does not Im uh, impact the material's microscopic shape deformation. However, in crystallography, we can observe the transformation from a highly uh, symmetric structure to a less symmetric structure in twin martensite. When you subject the martensite phase to mechanical stress, it leads to considerable displacements of the crystals or what we call uh, detwinning. This causes visible deformations on a larger scale. However, the deformation in the detwinned uh, phase can be restored when you heat the material again. In this case, we say that the material has been transformed from the detwinned material martensite to the austenite phase. 
We previously discussed the SMAs possess not only the shape memory effect but also the super elasticity. You may ask yourself when you will observe this effect, so stay with us for an ex explanation. Imagine you have a shape memory alloy stable in the austenite phase. Now if you deform it while maintaining a constant temperature, the SMA will transform into the detwinned martensite phase, which is an unstable state. But why do we call it unstable? Well, that's because the SMA was in the stable austenite phase before, and the temperature has not been changed during the deformation process. So when we uh, uh, unload the specimen, it will revert to the stable austenite phase, returning it to its original shape. This phenomenon is what we commonly refer to as spring pack. To help you understand better, we have provided this diagram. It includes the possible phase transformations that may occur in the SMAs, where the uh, horizontal line represents temperature and the vertical line shows stress. In this diagram, we have employed special symbols to illustrate the critical temperature and stress points. However, we have not described the parameters on this diagram and their role in simulating the phase transformations in SMAs in this video. You can find a detailed discussion about this diagram and its parameters in the package provided by the CAE Assistant Group. Several models have been developed to describe the behavior of shape memory alloy wire by considering the transformation rules shown on the diagram. One of the most well-known ones is Brinson's model, which has gained the attention of both researchers and those working in this field. It has multiple equations to simulate the possible transformations from the austenite to detwinned martensite and the conversion from martensite to the austenite phase in the shape memory alloys. All of the equations depend on a parameter called martensite volume fraction. It represents the volume fraction of material that has transformed to the martensite phase. The model suggests that the overall martensite volume fraction, represented by Kisai, can be divided into two parts, the stress-induced martensite volume fraction and the temperature-induced martensite volume fraction. Moreover, the stress relies on several key factors. Young's modulus, strain, maximum recoverable strain, current temperature, reference temperature and the thermal expansion coefficient. In this scenario, uh, according to this equation, Young's modulus relies on the martensite volume fraction and the Young's moduli of the austenite and martensite phases. Using this model, we can compute the material Jacobian with the following equation, where the differentiation of D with respect to the strain is as follows. Compute the material Jacobian with the following equation, where the differentiation of D with respect to the strain is as follows. Finally, the Jacobian takes the following form. According to these equations, the main challenge in Brinson's model is to calculate the martensite volume fraction during the phase transformations, represented by Kisai in the formulations. You might be wondering how to calculate it. Let's explain. We will begin by exploring a sample at a consistent temperature above MS and under a mechanical stress. In this situation, we have two equations based on Brinson's model to determine the martensite volume fraction during the transformation. The first equation calculates the volume fraction in induced by stress. The second equation deals with the volume fraction induced by temperature. Now let us examine the transformation to the D-twin martensite phase, where the temperature remains consistently below MS. In this case, we have a simple equation to calculate the stress-induced martensite volume fraction. However, the equation for the temperature-induced martensite volume fraction remains the same. It was a brief review of Brinson's model. However, you can access the provided package to gain a complete understanding of this model's formulations. Now it is time to discuss the process of modeling shape memory alloys in Abacus. But do you know how to implement Brinson's constitutive model in Abacus CAE? We will describe it. Have you ever heard of UMAT subroutine in Abacus CAE? If not, we recommend watching our lesson on this subroutine on the CAE Assistant website. We have used UMAT in this package to simulate the behavior of shape memory alloys in Abacus. This subroutine enables you to incorporate various mechanical constitutive models into the Abacus library and thus in a general and powerful tool. 
We will use it to describe the behavior of SMA wires in Abacus based on the provided equations for the solution of a numerical examples. You might wonder how to write a subroutine for this problem, especially with the need for some basic knowledge of the Fortran language. Don't worry, we have made it easy for you. A full guide on this matter is provided in the package. The package guides you through writing the UMAT subroutine for the simulation of SMAs step by step. Moreover, it includes a learning workshop. The workshop presents a step-by-step -step guide on modeling the behavior of a shape memory alloy in Abacus. You can watch the key points of the modeling process in Abacus as provided in the workshop for free in the current video. If you are interested in more detailed information, you can access the provided package. Okay, let's start. The problem includes an SMA wire stretch under a concentrated force as shown in the figure. This situation involves a transformation to the detwined merchant side phase and therefore require the UMAS subroutine for modeling in Abacus. The property are taken from reference 5. As shown in the figure, the wire is straight with a length of 1 mm. The material properties are presented in this table. We have fully discussed them in the packet. The wire is considered as a truss with a cross-sectional area of 1 square millimeter. The movement of the wire at its bottom is fixed in both the X and Y direction. At the other end, a force is applied in the same direction as the wire. This force starts at zero and increases linearly, reaching 500 newtons in one second. The wire is under a uniform con constant temperature of 55 degrees Celsius. Now let us define the wire's geometry in Abacus. To do this, choosing part from the module combo box in the context bar. Then click the create part icon in the toolbox area. Select the 2D planar radio button to model in two-dimensional space. Let the deformable radio button be selected as the wire is not rigid. Finally, choose the wire radio button to draw the wire. You need to specify an appropriate value for approximate size to better fit the drawing area. We have chosen a value that is twice the length of the wire. However, it is not fixed and you can choose different values if you think they are more suitable. Click continue to begin drawing. Click create lines a connected icon to draw the wire. We have drawn the wire and clicked done to save it. To define material property, select property from the module combo box in the context bar. Next, click on Create Material in the Toolbox area. We have chosen SMA for the material's name, but you can choose another name. After that, in the Material Editor window, click on the General menu and then click the User Material. You should define all material properties values in the same order as they are defined in the subroutine. In the Learning Package, we have provided a comprehensive guide on defining the material properties in the subroutine and in putting them in the same order in Abacus CAE. You can refer to it for a full guide. Now we select General Menu and then click on Deep Bar in the Material Editor to define the number of state variables. We write three in the numerical field for the number of solution-dependent state variables considered in the subroutine. Finally, click OK to close the Material Editor. Then we have defined a section and assign it to the SMA wire. Now you must go to the assembly module to create an instance for the desired model. To define a step, select a step from the module combo box in the context bar. Then click on the create step icon. We select static general for the type of step and then choose a name for it. You can choose any name you want. Then click continue to proceed. Let the NI Geom radio button st stay off since uh, we neglect the nonlinear effects on large displacements in the step. The total step time is assumed to remain one second, although it doesn't affect the results in this problem. But we should make some corrections to the incrementation menu. We set the initial and the maximum increment sizes both to 5000. This is because they must be uh, sufficiently small to ensure that the analysis doesn't jump from austenite to the martensite phase and that the transformation is seen. We have increased the maximum uh, number of increments to 10,000 to prevent the analysis from stopping 
due to uh, reaching the maximum number of increments. You can simply click OK to save the modifications. Moreover, you need to define the desired field outputs, such as stress and strain, in this module. However, this process is not covered in this trial video, assuming you are already familiar with it. If you need more detail on this matter, you can explore the package provided for modeling SMAs on the CAE Assistant website. Now select Load from the module's combo box. Next, click on the Create Load icon to apply the force to the wire. Make sure loading is chosen in the Step combo box. If it is not, you can select it yourself. Select the mechanical radio button to specify the load category and then choose uh, Concentrated Force as the load type. Afterward, click Continue. Choose the end point of the wire and click Done. Input 0 for the force in the X direction and minus 500 for the force in the downward Y direction. Keep the amplitude combo box set to Ramp since the load linearly increase. In this example, click OK to exit. Then click the Create Boundary Conditions icon in the Toolbox area. Make sure loading is chosen in the Step combo box and choose the Mechanical Radio button for the category. Choose Displacement Rotation for the type of boundary condition and then click Continue. Then choose the starting point of the wire and click Done. Cons uh, constrain displacements in both the X and Y directions and then click OK. Finally, click on the Create a Predefined Field icon to apply temperature. Choose Initial from the Step Combo box and make sure the other radio button is selected for the category. Select Temperature for the type and click Continue. Then select the wire and click Done. Write 55 for the magnitude of the constant temperature and then specify that the temperature is constant throughout region. Click OK to proceed. We should go to the mesh module to generate the mesh before starting the solution process. The meshing process and the properties of the chosen elements are completely discussed in the learning package. Then we have created a job, addressed the Fortran file that includes the UMass subroutine and submitted the job. Afterward, we have extracted the stress strain curve for the SMA for verification. A full description of this procedure is provided in the package on our website but it is not covered in the trial video. As you can see, the obtained result matches the analytical solution and thus the subroutine works as expected. It was just a brief review of the topics covered in the package on our website. Moreover, the package includes all the Fortran subroutine and Abacus modeling files. We hope this trial video ha has been helpful for you. Have a nice day and goodbye. Hello everybody and welcome to our new video training package of Abacus. Simulation of SMA in Abacus with UMAT. This package includes these sections. Lesson 1. What are shape memory alloys or SMAs? Lesson 2. How do SMAs behave? Lesson 3. UMAT for modeling SMA wires. Workshop. Simulation of a shape memory alloy wire. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. We hope it will be useful for you.